Hello everyone, welcome to the course Electronic Circuits and Analysis 1. We are in unit Linear Wave Shaping Circuits. In today's lecture, I am going to show you some circuit simulations of RC low pass filter circuit when several type of inputs are applied to that circuit. So let's begin. The circuit simulator that we are going to use is LT Spice 17th version. This is a freely available circuit simulator. You can easily download and install it. Firstly, I am going to show you the simulation of RC low pass filter circuit when the input is a sinusoidal input. Okay. So, this is what is the RC low pass filter circuit that I have considered. This is R, whose value is 100 kilo ohms, and this is C whose value is 1 microfarad. I am taking the output at the node shown here denoted with V out with respect to the ground. So that is voltage is taken across the capacitor. And I am applying the input denoted by V in which is nothing but a sinusoidal input whose peak value is 0, 10 volts. Okay, whose peak value is 10 volts. Right? Okay. Let me run this circuit first. Then let me show you the input, how it looks like. Or before that, let me show you what are the characteristics that we have chosen for the input sinusoidal waveform. So the characteristics that we have chosen are DC offset voltage to be 0 volts, amplitude that is peak value of the sinusoidal signal that is 10 volts, and the frequency is 100 hertz. Frequency is 100 hertz means time period is 1 over 100 that is 10 milliseconds. And the number of cycles we are interested in observing in the waveform of the input signal is 10. Okay. Let us see that how does our input signal is going to look like with these characteristics. Right. Okay. Let me run this. I'll be pinning to the input voltage and this is how my input voltage is being shown. Okay. On the X axis, it is shown the time from 0 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds. Okay. And at G, T is equal to 0 milliseconds, my input voltage is exactly 0 and over one period that is 10 milliseconds, my average value is going to be zero. Average value means positive peak plus negative peak by two. Positive peak is 10, negative peak is minus 10. So 10 minus 10 by two is zero. Okay, so my average value of a sine waveform is normally zero. That is why you could see that at t is equal to zero milliseconds that your input is zero. Okay, right. And in fact, if you want to change your average value of the sinusoidal waveform, you can change from, let us say from zero to two volts. Okay, let us see what happens if I change the average value from zero to two volts, right? So click OK. And now let me run it once again. So that now you can see your new input waveform with the average value changed from zero to the two volts. So what is your observation is, at t is equal to 0 milliseconds, now your input is no more 0, it has shifted to from 0 to 2 volts because your uh, DC voltage now you have given is 2 volts. That is why it has shifted from 0 volts to 2 volts. Okay, your AC is riding on top of the DC where the DC value is 2 volts in this case. That is what you have chosen in your characteristics, right? So DC value is given by positive peak plus negative peak by 2. Positive peak is 12 plus negative peak is minus 8. So 12 minus 8 is 4. 4 by 2 is 2. So that is why my average value is 2. Right? Earlier my input might be starting at here which is 0. Now my input is having at 2 volts at t is equal to 0 milliseconds. Right? Okay. Now 
Let me show you the transient analysis of this circuit when the input applied is sinusoidal input. Okay. Go to this menu simulate. Go to the edit simulation command. And now the first thing is transient analysis. You need to choose what is the stop time and what is the time at which you want your data to get saved. I have chosen 0 milliseconds that is from the starting itself I want the data to be saved. And the stop time I have chosen here is 100 milliseconds for a reason that I have considered in my input signal the period is 10 milliseconds and I am interested in observing up to 10 cycles. So with a period of 10 milliseconds up to 10 cycles it consumes 100 milliseconds. So that is why I have chosen stop time to be 100 milliseconds even it can be more than that no issue. Okay. So I am clicking OK here. Then I uh, will run here. I have considered an RC where my R is equal to 100 kilo ohms and C is equal to 1 microfarad with which my RC tau time constant is going to be 100 milliseconds where my time period of the input sinusoidal signal is 10 milliseconds that is what we have considered 100 hertz means 10 milliseconds so that means now we are in the case RC is much greater than capital D much greater than as I told earlier much greater than can always be taken as 10 times. So as my tau is RC is 10 times greater than my capital T. That is capital T is 10 milliseconds, RC is 100 milliseconds. So we are in the case of RC is much greater than capital T. Right? Now let us see that what is my output is going to look like for this condition of RC is much greater than capital T. So let me run this. Then let me show you the output. So this is what is the output waveform that is going to look like. So the blue curve is representing the output. Blue curve is representing the output. And the green curve is representing the input. Okay. So you could see that my output voltage is almost very much negligible compared to the input. Because my RC is very very large compared to the capital T. Right. Your uh, capacitor is not being given sufficient time to reach to the maximum value of the input. So that is why your output across the capacitor is almost negligible. Right. Okay. So let me reduce to certain extent my RC may be exactly equal to your capital T. My capital T is 10 milliseconds. Now my RC 10 kilo ohm into 1 microfarad is exactly 10 milliseconds which is equal to the capital T. You all know that when my tau is equal to capital T, tau is nothing but time to reach the 63.2 percent of the maximum value. So let us see that what is your output is actually going to be when tau is equal to capital T. Okay. So let me run the circuit once again. And now you can observe that your waveform has got improved when compared to the earlier case where RC is much greater than capital T. But of course the value now over one particular period is not exactly equal to the 63.2 percent of the maximum value because there is a presence of R here so that there will be some drop across this R with which my voltage across the capacitor is not going to be exactly equal to 63.2 percent of the maximum value. Right? Okay. So let us see the another case where my RC is much less than capital T. Okay, my RC is much less than capital T. This time my RC is 1 millisecond, right? And my capital T is 10 milliseconds. So my RC is much less than capital T. Then you expect your output voltage, what it could be across your capacitor. Okay, so let me run again. Now you could see that your output is almost following the input because your tau is very, very small. Okay, your tau is very very small compared to your capital T, which is nothing but 10 milliseconds. Okay, so as your input is increasing, your voltage across the capacitor also tries to increase to reach to the maximum value of the input. But by the time it reaches this particular value, 
then uh, because your input is decreasing your output also starts decreasing to reach to the input voltage but by the time it reaches this value yeah, as your input is increasing now your capacitor voltage also tries to increase like this okay so likewise your capacitor discharges when your input is decreasing and your capacitor charges when your input is increasing okay Char discharging charging discharging charging okay so this is how my output of the rc low pass filter circuit when the input applied is a sinusoidal input okay so earlier we have seen mathematically now i am interested in showing you the simulation results of this rc low pass filter circuit right okay let me show you the magnitude response and the phase response of the rc low pass filter circuit when the input is sinusoidal input okay so let me go to the circuit so this is the circuit that we are considering which is an rc low pass filter circuit r is equal to 1 kilo ohm c is equal to 1 microfarad so that rc is equal to 1 millisecond and the input signal that we have considered is a sinusoidal input signal whose peak value is 10 volts okay and let me show you the characteristics once again the characteristics are left out to be same as what we have considered earlier that is peak value is 10 volts frequency is 100 hertz that is time period is 10 millisecond and the number of cycles that we are interested in is 10 cycles now we are interested in ac analysis while finding the frequency response and the phase response so here we need to look at the small signal ac analysis where my ac amplitude is representing the gain of the circuit let the maximum gain be denoted by one okay then you click ok now you could see that the gain of the circuit is denoted here as one right okay now what sort of analysis we are interested in we are interested in ac analysis so go to the menu simulate go to the edit simulation command now this time we are not interested in transient analysis but instead we are interested in ac analysis so click ac analysis then select the type of sweep so type of sweep means you can select either linear or decayed or even octave okay so we will be selecting decayed and the number of points per decade is let it be some 10 and let the start frequency be 1 hertz and the stop frequency be some 2 kilohertz now click ok right ok so now let us run one time So when I look at my output, the magnitude response and the phase response are being shown like this. Okay. So but here you could see that the angle is minus 99 degrees, but it can never go to the minus 99 degrees because the maximum that it can have is only 90 degrees. So that is why I am changing that the maximum need to be only 90. Okay. Now it is somewhat meaningful. Because my theta is given by minus tan inverse of f by fh, when f is found to be infinity, my angle is found to be 90 degrees. Okay, so it cannot have beyond 90 degrees. So it is meaningful that if my angle is ended up with minus 90 degrees. Okay, so this curve is representing my magnitude response, which is exactly same as what we have shown in our earlier classes, and this is. Uh, phase response okay at f is equal to 0 or lower frequencies what is my phase is given by for example f is equal to 0 my angle is given by 0 okay so my angle here is 0 so at f is equal to 0 my angle is 0 okay at uh, exactly at uh, f is equal to um, fh my angle is found to be 45 degrees okay my angle is found to be 45 degrees as f tends to infinity my angle is found to be 90 degrees that is why your phase angle will never go to touch this particular line which is a minus 90 degrees 
and similarly my gain or magnitude response is shown like this and you know that the upper cut off frequency is nothing but the frequency okay so let me draw that line okay so the line which i am going to draw exactly at 3 db okay this is 0 db 2 db this is 4 db so 3 db will be in between these two okay so i'll be taking here taking here from this i'm drawing a line just for illustration okay so when i draw a line maybe uh, at 3 db okay assume that this line is cutting at 3 db right so that intersection point the frequency at which my gain is found to be at 3 db okay uh, in 3 db in decibels it is 3 db but in linear scale it is uh, 1 over root 2 times the maximum gain okay so uh, frequency at that particular gain it is what is normally called as upper cutoff frequency okay so with k is equal with r is equal to 1 kilo ohm c is equal to 1 microfarad the upper cutoff frequency is given by 1 by 2 pi r c so that is going to be roughly 159 point something hertz so 159 from here to here it is 200 300 400 500 600 700 800 900 1 kilohertz so that means from here to here it is 200 so 159 e will be somewhere here okay all right okay so this is what is our cutoff frequency which is normally called as upper cutoff frequency right so this is the magnitude response and the phase response of the rc low pass filter circuit and the input is a sinusoidal input right okay let me show you the step response of the rc low pass filter circuit this is the rc low pass filter circuit where r is equal to 1 kilo ohm c is equal to 1 microfarad such that rc is equal to 1 millisecond and this time my input is a step input that is 10 volt dc right let me run one time let me show you the input how it looks like this is what is my step input is okay so before t is equal to 0 milliseconds my input is 0 all of a sudden at t is equal to 0 milliseconds my input has changed from 0 volts to plus 10 volts okay i have considered only up to 10 milliseconds right and what sort of analysis we are looking at we are looking at a transient analysis okay with the starting time is 0 milliseconds and the ending time is 10 milliseconds so when i observe the output voltage so the, my output voltage is going to look like this which is the step response of the rc low pass filter circuit when the input is a step input okay so you could see that you can recollect whatever we have learned earlier that when uh, tau is equal to 1 millisecond here tau is nothing but 1 millisecond so at exactly 1 millisecond you know the definition of tau that it is it is going to reach 63.2 percent of its maximum value that is around 6 volts so you could see that this value is around 6 volts and at phi tau your capacitor is going to reach almost the entire value that is applied across the input side okay so at phi tau which is nothing but tau is equal to 1 millisecond so phi tau is 5 millisecond my output voltage is almost equal to the input voltage right so this is what is the step response what we have seen earlier also right okay let me show you the response of RC low pass filter circuit when the input is pulse input. Okay. So, this is the circuit which is our RC low pass filter circuit whose time constant is 1 millisecond. Okay. 
This time I want to apply the input not a sinusoid L but a pulse input. So that is why I am selecting pulse input where the characteristics are being defined as initial voltage B is 0 and the voltage that the input signal can have be 10 volts and uh, let the on time period be 10 milliseconds and the total period be 20 milliseconds ok and I am interested in only one cycle so that is one cycle ok click ok so you could see that the pulse input that we have represented is shown here pulse input now with a pulse duration 10 milliseconds and the total period that means for the on period and the off period altogether it is 20 milliseconds okay and the on time voltage the voltage that the input signal can have is 10 volts right okay and what type of analysis we are interested in transient analysis response as a function of time that is what we are interested in so go to the simulate edit command simulation command we are interested in transient analysis so choose a stop time what is the time period you have chosen here 20 milliseconds so let us choose 20 milliseconds and the time to start saving data is let it be 0 milliseconds right click ok now let us run one time and now before we go look at the output voltage let me show you how does the input voltage is going to look like so this is how the input voltage which is nothing but our pulse input we have already seen that the pulse input is having the characteristic that its value is some particular value okay in this case it is 10 volts only for a certain duration what is being called as pulse duration okay and the pulse duration that we have considered is 10 milliseconds and the total period that we have considered is 20 milliseconds so that means for a period of 10 milliseconds the input signal is going to have 10 volts and for the next 10 milliseconds the input signal is going to be 0 volts okay and uh, you could observe that though you have changed suddenly your input from 0 volts to 10 volts you could see it is taking some time it is not that instantly at t is equal to 0 seconds you could have a value of your input changing from 0 to 10 volts you could see that there is some amount of time that is being taken roughly it is 1 millisecond ok I hope you are able to follow me this is 0 milliseconds this is 2 milliseconds and in between somewhere here 1 millisecond so that means your input is taking at least 1 millisecond time in changing from 0 volts to plus 10 volts similarly in changing from plus 10 volts to 0 volts it is taking around 1 millisecond so from here to here it is 1 millisecond so your input is taking 1 millisecond to change from plus V volts to 0 volts ok and from there onwards it is being 0 and the pulse duration is 10 milliseconds ok so when this kind of input signal is applied we are interested in observing what is our transient analysis ok so let me show you the output so this is how the output is going to look like we have already derived an expression for this output voltage and uh, from here to here it is exactly same as like your step response only because from here to here it is same as your step response but from here to here as your input is suddenly changing from V volts to 0 volts your output also tries to reach towards the 0 volts ok so we denoted in our earlier class this response with V0 1 of T and this response with V0 2 of T ok right let me show you the response of RC low pass filter circuit 
to a square wave input okay so this is the rc low power filter circuit r is equal to 1 kilo ohm c is equal to 1 microfarad so rc is 1 millisecond so this time it is square waveform right so let me show you the characteristics the on period uh, input voltage is 10 volts on period is 10 milliseconds and the total time period is 20 milliseconds and the number of cycles that we are interested in observing are 10 okay so you could see the same information here and the response that we are interested in is a transient response and the stop time is 200 milliseconds and the start time is 0 milliseconds okay so let me run one time so let me show you how does the input signal is going to look like so this is how the input signal which is nothing but your square waveform what is the period of the square waveform 0 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds okay so 20 milliseconds is what is the period that we have considered right so that on period is 10 milliseconds off period is 10 milliseconds right and of course you can observe that it is not the very instantaneous that the input is changing from 0 volts to 10 volts it is taking some time right so when i try to observe the output voltage it is going to be like this why this is going to be like this because my time period is going to be 20 milliseconds and my rc is going to be 1 millisecond because my rc is much less than capital t my output is going to reach much before the capital t right so that is why you could see that your uh, in output has reached almost the input voltage completely at this point itself because your rc is very very less right and because your input has suddenly changed from less v 10 volts to 0 volts your output also suddenly changes and also the rate at which your output is changing is also very fast because the tau is very very small compared to the capital t right okay suppose if i consider my tau is equal to capital t right so this time it is uh, 10 milliseconds right or i'll say it as 20 milliseconds so when i make it as 20 milliseconds because my time period is also 20 milliseconds the case that rc is equal to capital t now let me run one side now you can observe that your output is going to be roughly some 63.2 uh, percent okay so initially it is starting with zero okay so your input suddenly changes from zero volts to 10 volts consequently your output across the capacitor also tries to move towards the 10 volts but by the time it could reach this value let us say 4 volts your input suddenly changes from 10 volts to 0 volts so your output also tries to change from 10 volts to 0 volts but by the time it could reach this particular value again your input has changed so that is why it could reach this value again your input has changed that is why it could reach this value so what is your observation is after a certain point of time your uh, output waveform is going to be stabilized okay so initially the input wave output voltage is not stabilized okay that means steady state is not at reach right so only after some cycle your steady state of your output voltage you can observe steady state means the variation with respect to time is very negligible okay so here the variation with respect to time is very 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 high as you are moving along the cycle you could reach the steady state of your output voltage where the variation in output voltage with respect to the time is very very less is this okay right okay then
let me show you the response of rt low pass filter circuit when the input is a ramp input signal okay let us consider the same old rt low pass filter circuit this time r value is 100 kilo ohms c value is 1 microfarad let me show you how does the input is going to look like so my input is a ramp input you know that pi of t is equal to alpha times t okay at t is equal to 1 millisecond my input is alpha times t t is equal to 1 millisecond that is 1 volt that means alpha is 1 okay alpha is 1 so at t is equal to 2 milliseconds input is 2 volts at 3 milliseconds input is 3 volts so here the slope is 1 so that at t is equal to 10 milliseconds input is 10 volts okay so this is what is our ramp input signal is at t is equal to capital t which is 10 milliseconds my input is found to be 10 volts right okay so here rc is found to be 100 milliseconds so that means rc is much greater than capital t because rc is 10 times greater than the capital t when we observe the output for this case of rc is much greater than capital t how does my output is going to look like you can see that my output is getting more deviated from the input signal okay the transmission error is very very high because rc is very very large okay when i reduce my rc from 100k to 10k then my rc is going to become 10 milliseconds where my capital t is also 10 milliseconds that means rc is equal to capital t k then when you observe your output let me run one time then you could see that the deviation in your output from the input is going to reduce to certain extent and compared to the earlier case okay so when i further reduce my rc when i further reduce my rc by changing my r from 10k to 1k now my rc is going to be 1 millisecond so that it is much less than capital t now when you observe your output by running one time so now your output is almost equivalent to your input except that there is a difference what is the difference is alpha tau okay alpha is 1 and the tau is 1 millisecond right is this okay so this is how the we can get the simulation of the circuit rc low pass filter circuit for the variety of inputs that what we consider in our first particular unit okay so i hope you all have understood what we discussed so far regarding this rc low pass filter circuit right thank you very much for watching see you next time